Joanno and Paris Cavades have long been a familiar name throughout the Middle East, having been established there since 1969. And over the years, they've completed many prestigious projects throughout the region. However, it wasn't until 1992 that they first ventured into Egypt. Now, with a foothold in this competitive marketplace and with their solid reputation, in June 1998, JNP were contracted by Alexandria Saudi Company for Tourism Projects to build the new Four Seasons Hotel Complex to be located in Sharm El Sheikh, a popular diving resort at the southern tip of the Sinai Peninsula. The site chosen was a coastal region of approximately 150,000 square meters, mostly made up of medium to hard yellowish white limestone. After initial surveying, the earthworks commenced in July 1998. This involved the excavation of 200,000 cubic meters of earth and rock using hydraulic breakers and heavy dosing equipment and 350,000 cubic meters of backfilling. The material for backfilling was quarried from borrow pits in nearby desert areas. Also during this period, some of the services, such as pipes for stormwater and sewerage, were positioned. After filling, the material was first leveled, then compacted. The hotel complex is split into six discernible main areas. These are utility and service buildings and areas, the staff accommodation comprising employee housing, management housing and general and residential manager villas, chalets with their own pool area and restaurant, 34 four-bedroom private villas, the clusters, which comprise the hotel guest rooms, together with the main pool area and restaurant, and also including the royal and presidential suites. And of course, the main body of the hotel and fitness center. The structure for the majority of the complex was a reinforced concrete. This is formed by erecting the reinforcing steel, of which there were over 6,000 tons used, followed by the treatment and positioning of shuttering. It is also during these stages that the conduiting for services is laid. Finally, once everything is in place, the concrete is poured directly to the prepared area by dedicated concrete pump. For floor slabs, the concrete is smoothed off. Once the shuttering is removed, it is easy to see how the sections are built up. Conventional block work, primarily for internal and external walls, and the characteristic stepped parapets, was also an integral part of the construction, with well over one million blocks being used throughout the hotel complex. The staff accommodation was purposely designed to enable the use of the highly expedient Utinor tunnel form system of construction. One of the toughest obstacles facing JNP during construction was the precipitous topography of the site, 
which has an elevation of 35 meters that drops sharply down to the Red Sea. In order to combat this, whilst also remaining within the strict local planning limitations of a maximum of two stories above original ground height, construction in terraces was necessitated, utilizing reinforced concrete retaining walls. In all, more than 122 kilometers of retaining walls, ranging between three and eight meters in height, had to be constructed. Whilst the majority of these were freestanding, a number were integrated into the buildings themselves. In all, there are five discernible levels from the sea to the peak of the site. All necessary services were incorporated into the project, including a water treatment plant, desalination plant, and a sewage treatment plant, with the treated water to be used to irrigate the extensive gardens. The most outstanding features of the hotel complex are arguably the multitudinous arches and domes. The arches are formed by first erecting one side of the shuttering, positioning the reinforced steel, adding the other side of the shuttering, and then the pouring of the concrete, with the final finish being in cement plaster. The domes were constructed in the following two different ways. Architectural, decorative domes were painstakingly constructed brick by brick by highly skilled artisans, traditionally versed in the method. Whereas functional domes, to be seen both internally and externally, were cast in reinforced concrete, with both types being finely plastered to a high degree of finish. Throughout, construction surveys were taken at regular intervals, and highly qualified engineers and foremen were always present over the entire site for the duration of the project. At the peak of the construction, there were over 230 managerial and supervisory personnel on site, and more than 2,800 laborers and tradesmen, a ratio of almost 1 to 10. Construction activities throughout the expansive area of the project had to be carefully coordinated to ensure that continuity and quality were maintained in every area and at every stage of construction.
The more than 1,200 palm trees were supplied by a local nursery, where they're grown to maturity before being transplanted. The fronds are wrapped for transportation and will remain that way until the tree has fully taken to its new environment. The landscaping was carried out simultaneously by three separate subcontractors in order to remain within the contract period. Apart from the palm trees, in all there were more than 1,300 trees planted. More than 25,000 square meters of shrubs and plants, 18,000 square meters of ground cover, and more than 22,000 square meters of lawn laid, all within a one-month period. For the stream bed, local stone was used and was expertly laid to imply natural formation. The hotel was opened on May the 1st, 2002. 34 months after the earthworks first began. An impressive achievement when one considers the many logistical and physical hurdles that had to be overcome during construction. The first thing one is presented with on entering the hotel grounds is the beautifully manicured, well-watered lawns and cool fountain. At the top of the small incline leading to the main entrance can be seen another, somewhat grander fountain. As well as the necessary parking area, the main entrance is surrounded by archways and open corridors, with features that lend a Moorish air to the overall impression. The style of lighting first seen here can be found seen throughout the rest of the hotel. Leading off this corridor, adjacent to the main entrance, can be found some shops. These were all fitted by J&P craftsmen to their usual uncompromising standard. Back outside the main entrance, the guest is reminded as to why Four Seasons Resorts are thought of so highly. And with the attention to detail and finishing that is second to none, why J&P were chosen to build this astonishing resort. This attention to detail and high level of finish is immediately apparent upon entering the lobby. The marble and hand-carved wooden reception desk made by JNP craftsmen. The impressive overhead dome rising nine meters above the patterned marble floor. Arches, water features, hanging glass walls and lighting all reflect the years of experience JNP have in the industry. Leading off from the right of the lobby is a delightfully cool and airy corridor that begins to lull the visitor back to T.E. Lawrence's days in Cairo. This feeling is only further enhanced when one arrives at the foot of the marble stairs that lead to the Nazrani Ballroom. The beautifully carved door surrounds are to be found mirrored on the other side in more opulent fashion. The overall impression one gets upon entering is of the heady pre-war days of the 1930s, with its fondness for Art Deco, trompe l'oeil murals, lush silks and rich wood panelling, and extravagant lighting. Back outside is another covered walkway that leads one to the health club. 
Inside, there is a comfortable rest area, a fully equipped gymnasium and reception area. There are also spa and sauna facilities for both men and women. Moving outside, we find a secluded pool where one can experience aqua aerobics. Back out to the left of the main entrance can be found the tennis club with its four professional standard tennis courts and clubhouse. The oyster water feature, which glows seemingly with its own ethereal light, is the centerpiece of the terrace bar, which is directly below the lobby. Here, one can sit overlooking the main courtyard out to the Red Sea, whilst enjoying a cocktail and being serenaded by the hotel's resident troubadour as the last rays of the day's sun turn the nearby island of Tehran to a deep golden red. Adjacent to the terrace bar, also with its own balcony, can be found the hotel's main restaurant. In order to create the two-tone effect, Rosso Verona and Yellow Real marble was imported from Italy lending a feel of the Moorish occupation of Spain, especially of the Mesquita in Cordoba. Once again, JNP's attention to detail and finish is exemplary, as can be seen in the carpentry, tiling, fountain and lighting. The restaurant also boasts a fully equipped open-style kitchen, Located on the opposite side of the terrace bar to the main restaurant, once again with its own balcony, is the Italian restaurant. This can also be reached by lift just off the main lobby. In addition to the balcony, there is the option of eating al fresco in the very pleasing courtyard that not only has a fountain, but also a functioning fireplace for the cooler winter evenings. Once inside, the guest is immediately faced with the luxurious splendor of the surroundings. An arresting mural painting ties in harmoniously with the rest of the room. From the highly finished two-tone wood flooring to the exquisite lighting, Perhaps the most impressive feature, though, is not immediately noticeable, as it is overhead, a breathtaking mosaic found just inside the entrance. The hotel's third restaurant is located on one of the lower levels and can be reached on foot by any of the many footpaths and stairs, by golf cart or by funicular. This transport system, unique to this hotel in Egypt, was specially commissioned from Lyft by Ghana, a Swedish-based company specializing in these systems. And it runs very nearly the entire elevation of the complex. The Oasis is the hotel's third restaurant. This aptly named restaurant is delightful in its poolside setting, whilst the Moorish feel is still to be found in the wrought ironwork. Moving further inside the restaurant, we come to a light and open area where the abundant sea life Sharm El Sheikh is famed for is reflected in the outstanding murals found there. Just opposite the Oasis restaurant, and part of the same design, is the poolside bar, where one can enjoy a drink between dips in the pool. The 
pleasing curves of the pool layout, together with the plentiful flora, only add to the already deeply relaxing atmosphere to be found here. Off to one side, there is also, in a complimentary layout, a children's pool, with plenty of seating for supervising adults. The 141 guest rooms are all found to the east of the main body of the hotel, in what are referred to as clusters. With their domes, stepped parapets, arches and small blue glass windows, the clusters, nestled amongst the many palm trees and sprawling over the many different levels, resemble a North African town from a bygone era. Some of the rooms have balconies that overlook the pool, but for other rooms there are courtyards with fountains, offering a tranquility so rarely found in today's frenetic tempo of life. If you check into a suite, you'll find that you have the use of your own plunge pool. Moving inside the standard room, we see straight away that it is anything but standard. The quality of craftsmanship, together with fittings, endows one with a feeling of being in a luxury suite. And the balcony, with a commanding sea view, simply reinforces that feeling. The bathroom continues the luxury, with hand-worked marble and the highest quality fixtures. The suite has a delightful living area and extra bathroom, boasting exquisite floor mosaics laid by JNP artisans. Off from the living area is the ensuite bedroom with distinctive arch and also offering a separate dressing area. The French windows lead out to the plunge pool, and the bathroom continues the distinct Moroccan flavour. To the southwest of the hotel complex, residing within their own grounds, can be found the royal and presidential suites. Royal Suite has not only its own spa pool, but also a substantial swimming pool, with panoramic views over the Red Sea to the island of Tehran. There is a high-ceilinged, voluminous living space with exquisitely carved wooden screens and many arabesque objets d'art. The room also features an impressive central dome with concealed lighting. Off the main living area, there is a dining room capable of accommodating up to eight guests. The master bedroom really is a delight, with its arched windows, heavy dark wood furniture and four-poster bed. The bathroom has twin showers, sinks and toilets, and an impressive stepped marble bath. In addition to the master bedroom, there are a further two guest rooms, one double and one twin. These are characteristically well-appointed, with bed hangings and hand-carved wooden arches, 
each with their by now familiar ensuite bathrooms. Adjacent to the Royal Suite, there are two presidential suites. These also feature their own swimming pools. Inside, there is a charming living area that also has dining for eight guests. And as well as the ubiquitous arches, in the lobby area, there is a stepped domed ceiling mirrored by an exquisite floor mosaic. As with the royal suite, the master bedroom here also has a four-poster bed. And as well as the ensuite bathroom, there is a dressing area with beautifully handcrafted solid wood cabinets. The double guest room is well proportioned and in addition to the